If you have never painted before, this video is for you. I will show you how to use acrylic paint to create a monochromatic painting focusing on shades and tints of just one color. If you're nervous about drawing a person, don't worry, you have options. If you love to draw, have a friend sit down for you and draw them. If you know how to do grid drawing, that's a great way to capture the likeness of a person. Or if you're a true beginner, do it like me and trace a photograph because remember, this is teaching you how to paint. Don't let the drawing part stop you. This is learning the technique of painting so that one day you never have to trace anything ever again. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button so you never miss a weekly tutorial. Today, I'm going to be tracing a photograph of my sister to create a basic monochromatic portrait using acrylic paint. Before all of the art teachers come at me in the comments section, let me explain myself with the concept of tracing. If you are brand new to painting, like never painted anything in your life, or you paint like you're drawing, where you just focus on lines, this is a great method to focus on the outcome of learning how to paint value without having to worry about capturing an image with your drawing. So I'm gonna be using this graphite paper, and what you do is you place it graphite or dirty side down on top of the surface you'll be tracing or painting on, so I'm using actually watercolor paper, then you put whatever it is that you are tracing on top of it. Now this is not a copyrighted image, this is an image, um, so my students will be taking their own pictures. This is a, a picture of my sister that she took of herself, so there's no copyright issues here. And then I'm pressing down with my pencil to transfer the lines that I draw onto my paper. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this. As always, I'm focusing on painting for beginners. So my Art 2 students will be doing this, and most students in this class have very little painting experience. And even if they've painted before, they haven't tried to capture value to make something look three-dimensional. The goal would be, after doing a painting like this, you would keep practicing, and eventually, um, you wouldn't need to trace, you wouldn't need to do grid drawing, and you wouldn't even need to sketch anything with a pencil first. So the more you practice, the better you'll get. And when I do portraits, I have people sit for me. I don't sketch anything, I do only paint, um, and I sketch with my paintbrush. So that would be the goal that you would do exercises like this to practice your basic skills. Um, it's simplifying things because yes, you're using a photograph, which lots of artists use photographs in their work, but I always like to kind of use that as training wheels. And then once you kind of see something flat, can you observe something in the real world three-dimensionally and capture it then? That would be a goal for yourself if you really want to get good at painting and capturing things um, from direct observation. Contour drawing is also an excellent way to practice drawing people because you're just focusing on the outer edges and the outlines. So if you're practicing painting, great. And if you want to practice drawing and capturing things from life, definitely get out your pens and definitely try out contour drawing. One thing you may notice is it looks like I'm giving my sister lines for plastic surgery. Um, I'm just trying to capture not only the lines that I see in the big shapes, but I want to see where are the areas of lights and darks. So those little outlines I drew on her cheek is to remind myself that when I paint, this is the lightest area, so I need to use the lightest tint, which we'll get to soon. Um, I love the background of this because it has leaves, and I'm going to kind of make that look abstract when I paint. Once you've checked your work and you feel comfortable, you have all the details, it's time to start your value scale. A value scale is a progression of color focusing on value or areas of light and dark. So what I'm gonna be doing here is starting with my base color, which is blue, and I'm gonna gradually add white to create a value scale of tints. And tints, that is the act of adding white to a base color to lighten it when you're painting. So you can see I'm starting with the base color, which for this value scale is going to be the darkest value. And then I'm gonna add white um, to eventually go lighter, lighter, and so lighter. So I'm using the high-tech styrofoam plate for my palette. And if you have a palette with individual wells, you could pre-mix your values and that would make painting even easier. I'm gonna be painting a little more instinctually where I kind of mix my colors or my tints as I go. And I'll explain that technique um, so I'm not gonna do any pre-mixing. I'm gonna try and blend and see the value as I'm painting um, and not have my values pre-mixed in separate little containers. Both options are fine. This is just, um, since I already traced, I think I've set myself up for success and I think trying to look at the value and mix it as you're painting is a, I don't know, a more involved, more instinctual way to paint. 
Practicing your value scales are key, and I highly recommend doing more than one. Um, I've had my students practice several on a separate piece of paper, and so this is just kind of a demonstration, and I'm doing it on the same paper because I will be trimming it anyway. You can see that the drawing that I traced, um, you can see it doesn't take up the whole space, so you could do this on a separate piece of paper. You could do it in your sketchbook. Um, and I'm using ultramarine blue, and I'm using Blick acrylic paints because that's what I have in the classroom, and I usually buy the color mixing set. Um, and you can see on my palette, um, and I'll zoom in there, you can see how I'm going from dark to light by mixing that white. It's really great practice and you're gonna be using these values as you're painting. So the goal here is that your last tint in your value scale is your lightest and would be pure white. So that's kind of the goal and you could set a certain number of values that you have to create. I usually do between five and seven. You could certainly do more and you could get away with doing less depending on your skill level and what achievement you're trying to make as far as contrast. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and I'm gonna look at where are the light areas in my photograph. Now I kind of messed myself up a little bit because I drew all over the photograph obviously. So what I would do is have a second copy or you can pull it up on a computer or Chromebook screen or even on your phone to really map out those areas. So value mapping is where you go back in and you look for, in this case, the lightest areas first because I'm starting with tints. So what I'm doing is I'm looking, I'm saying, okay, where are the absolute lightest values in this photograph? And it's my sister's eyes, her cheeks, the top of her nose. She's got on a white shirt um, and that highlight in the hoop of her earring. There's also some light values in the back, but I might kind of play around with the values and I might change it a little bit. As far as the face, I am ready to paint my lightest tint. So you can see on the cheek there, it is not pure white. It has a little bit of blue mixed in and I'm using ultramarine blue. This would be really easy to do grayscale. So if you've never painted before, I think grayscale is the easiest way to do it because you don't have to use your brain to say, okay, if this is light gray, what does that translate to for blue? It just kind of ends up um, where you're just matching grays. So you can see I'm gonna fill in a section at a time and then I am laying on a lighter tint on top of that. So acrylic paint dries very quickly. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of add some sections that are nearby of that lightest tint and then kind of build up from there. One thing to keep in mind when painting is that a painting does not look finished until it's done. And a lot of times if you're new to painting or creating portraits, it can be very scary to paint someone that you know or paint yourself. So don't worry if they look weird or look like an alien or a smurf or all the negative things you can think of. Just stick with it, map out your value and really think about the areas of light and dark. Keep in mind that acrylic paint is meant to be layered. So if you're not happy with the first layer or the first attempt, just know that you can build and build and build. Um, and if you don't get something right the first time, let it dry and then come back to it. So I'm using a round brush um, and I like to blend with a dry paintbrush that has no paint on it. So I'll get there and show you how to do that technique as well once I'm blending and layering multiple tints. She definitely has a Smurf-like vibe with this blue, but I do think Ultramarine is just a really pretty blue. Um, so it really depends on what paint you have access to. I almost did red because I thought pink would be fun. And again, grayscale is kind of the easiest choice here because you don't have to rethink your values. Now I'm going a little bit darker and I'm taking the brush I was talking about and I'm blending it with a clean brush that's dry with no paint on it. Oftentimes students really like to dip their paintbrush in water, but with acrylic paint, um, I find that it just waters it down too much. I'm not saying there's not a time and place where that would work, but for me, I like to take that clean dry brush and kind of blend my paint from there. So again, I'm layering a slightly darker tint. It's still kind of the light to medium blue. And then I'm gonna take that brush again and kind of pull that paint to the lighter area so it has a nice blend. So not all paintings have to have a smooth texture. That's just kind of what I'm going for here. But you could do rougher, choppy brush strokes. Google like famous paintings of people or famous portraits and you're gonna see so many different styles of painting, different brush strokes. There's so many different directions to go with this once you've learned the basics of how to paint value. I do like to kind of get the details and values in the eye kind of early on. It usually gives me confidence with the work of art. So it's not just like a blob of blue, but I can really see some detail. Maybe it kind of looks 
looks like my sister finally, and that just gives me confidence as I'm painting. So although I don't recommend starting with the eye, I do recommend filling in parts of the face to get used to those big areas of light value, and then kind of go in and add those details as you see fit. I want to make sure I don't make my sister cross-eyed, but I also need to give myself um, grace. I'm not gonna get it right the first time. She might look cross-eyed. The nose definitely doesn't look right. So a painting, again, never looks finished until it's finished. So build up those layers, really do your value mapping, pay attention to the lights and the darks, and not what you think the eye should look like, but what you're actually copying from the photograph. So don't try and make, a lot of times students make the eyes like super gigantic. Trust your skills, trust what you see, and really practice to do observational painting. And although you aren't painting from life, you are painting from a source image. Maybe, hopefully, you even took the source image yourself, and that should give you good information to work with. Um, I like the pointy brush or the round brush for this because um, getting in those fine lines is difficult. So I really love a round brush because you can paint large sections, but you can also go in and get really fine detail. The hair and the eyebrows are also really fun areas to do. And so I want to pay attention to the shape, to the value, and I'm going to kind of blend um, the face into the eyebrow. Remember your eyebrow sets on on your skin so you don't want to paint them like last or separately where it's just awkwardly drawn on there like a floating eyebrow so i like to get those details in first and then i'll watch or i'll show you how i kind of match my values um, of the skin tone over that as well now that i have some of my details like the eyes and the eyebrows filled in i'm going to pull back a little bit and go to the cheeks the forehead and just those large the neck there's large areas of pretty much a light to light medium value. So this would be like a level two, maybe a level three or four on the value scale. And I'm gonna fill them in. Um, and I'm doing the darkest on the neck first. You can see that edge there kind of has a nice shadow to it. So I'm putting in that more, really that's more like medium to medium dark value. Then I mix one that's slightly lighter and I kind of blend them together. You see that brush I'm that using? Brush Let me zoom in. On it. I'm just using it to blend the values together for a nice smooth blend. So that's my trick um, is using a paintbrush just for blending that isn't wet and that doesn't have a color on it. All right, Amber, let's get that nose back into shape. Um, so you can see I'm using my paintbrush to just add a light value to it. I know I don't have my lightest areas or my shadows yet for my detail. Um, and that's gonna be important to get those really nuanced lights and darks at the end of the nose. Um, and I'm kind of procrastinating a little bit, filling in other areas too. And I'll procrastinate a lot. Maybe I'll jump and do the hair before I do those small details. Um, and keep in mind that's totally fine if the hair's easier for you once you have some details mapped in. There's nothing wrong with jumping around at your comfort level. That's one of the beauties of just doing monochromatic is you don't have to clean your brushes often. You don't have to worry about your color scheme getting muddy. And it's just such a great way to look at value and to see how value creates a three-dimensional work of art. If this was just line-based, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it wouldn't show the concept contour of the face. It wouldn't show form. It wouldn't show three dimensions. And so although it is difficult to paint something lifelike, um, it just takes practice. And drawing or painting from a photograph at first, there's nothing wrong with using that to build your confidence and to build your knowledge. So then you could go back and make it a little more challenging for yourself from drawing from direct observation or level up and paint someone while they're sitting there with a paintbrush, no pencil at all. That would be a level up type situation. I feel like the neck is a pretty easy area because it has a range of values. You can see the darker shadows kind of on the edges. And then as the neck kind of curves forward, I'm blending it to create a lighter value. So if you've never painted anything before, maybe start there or even start in the background. But if you practice your value scale, you should feel pretty comfortable um, mixing and blending colors. So I'm gonna add that second or third value in the forehead. And one thing you wanna do is not make it look like your person, whoever you're painting, is wearing a wig. So you're gonna see that I take my paintbrush and extend into the hairline. Right now I'm building up that light value on the nose. It's pretty subtle, but you can see how just a little bit more white in the paint can really give it more value and really make it look more three-dimensional. So you can see what I'm doing now is I'm kind of playing along with the hairline. And luckily this is all blue. So if you were doing a portrait where the hair color was different from the face, still do this um, because the hair and the skin, it's not like they're separate from each other, they're connected. 
Um, you would see a little bit of your skin through your hair. And if you kind of go into the hairline with your skin color and then I'll do the same with the hair going into the skin. You'll get a more natural effect. There shouldn't be like a harsh line between the forehead and the hair. That just doesn't look natural. It's gonna give it a cartoonish or a wig-like quality, which whoever you're painting will appreciate it if it, you know, looks a little bit more natural. And I'll always go back and soften things up with this brush um, that doesn't have any paint on it. And you can see it kind of thins it out and blending it into that hairline. I'm gonna use the same thing, getting some shadows. And I think I'm ready to go for my darkest value yet once I do a little bit of blending. And I'm gonna do the base color in the areas that appear darkest in the photograph. I will go back and mix some shades, but I just like to kind of map it out almost like an underpainting. So I'm adding in those lines, the darkest areas of the eye. And I did edit this photograph to have contrast and I did kind of white the face out a little bit. Um, I made it kind of smooth and I made it black and white and I did bump the contrast so my darks would be dark and my lights would be lighter. So editing your photograph can really help too. So in the photograph you can see that this area is slightly darker but I'm just going to lay in the base color of just ultramarine blue and then I can build up from there. Um, that way if I go too dark it has a little bit of that base color underneath to kind of tone it down a little bit if I blend. I do know I don't have all the facial features exactly right. The nose isn't there. The cheeks aren't right. The lips are a little something. Um, so I'm not saying that I'm done, but I like to put like a layer down. Then I can go back and edit it and really look at it with a critical eye to see, okay, where are the darkest darks? Where are the lights? And I do think hanging this up and looking at it from a distance is very helpful. Sometimes when you're so close to a work of art, like physically, like I'm leaning in, it's hard to see what it looks like. So I like to go back and look at it from farther away. I'm a little crazy and I'm adding pure black to the eyes. Um, I'm gonna not do too much of that. I'm gonna mix some shades momentarily. Um, and a shade is a base color mixed with black. And everybody who paints has a different opinion on using black when mixing color. In an artwork like this, it's fine. I mean, the dark is going to, or the black's gonna make the blue like a navy blue. Keep in mind that black is a super dominant color and it will muddy up color schemes. So if you don't wanna just use black, you can also make a mixture of your primary color, so red, yellow, and blue. Then it makes a really nice, um, almost like a dark purple brown. And that's a great color to use if you have an art teacher who says, no, you can't use black. Or if you're just trying to get a color scheme, like if you're using yellow that's not so muddy, using color complements is also a really great way to create a neutral. I am gonna use black for this. Also, my husband is a painting professor and he uses black in his paintings. You just have to know how to use it, how it reacts with colors, and to not be too heavy handed um, because if you mix your black with your white, so let's say you mix a shade with a tint, it's gonna gray it out. So I'm still mapping in. You can see this titanium, not titanium, this uh, uh, ultramarine, that's the word I'm looking for. This ultramarine blue is not as dark as the photograph, but it gives me such a nice sense of where that dark is gonna lie and I just think it's a good meeting point so I don't go too dark too fast okay let's make a value scale using shades just like before I'm starting with my base color which is the blue and then I'm gonna gradually add black on my palette keep in mind that a little bit of black goes a long way and unlike a value scale of tints my color is going to get darker as I go. So this red paint that I'm painting on top of is long dry. And I'm putting just a little bit of black paint and I'm mixing my whole mixture, testing it. And if I'm happy with it, I'll paint the whole thing. So again, keep in mind that black is a super dominant color. You could do this um, with a mixture of, like I said, red, yellow, blue, and it'll make a really nice dark kind of brownish violet color that I love to use in my own paintings. But since this is all shades intense, it's all monochromatic, I feel totally fine mixing black and it is a great way to learn. So I'm doing the same thing I did before. I'm gonna create as many values as I can, hopefully at least five, maybe more. And I'm trying to get to where the final value is pure black. So I need to kind of play around a little bit. And just like if you were using a palette that had individual little circles or wells, you could pre-mix your values and you could have them ready to go. I just kind of mix on my palette as I go. It might not be the easiest way to do it, but that's just the way that makes sense for me. It's the way I paint. And you really have to ask yourself, is this value lighter or darker? And keep mixing as you go.
you definitely want to test out each color before you commit to it because black will change for example if you were doing this in yellow which i don't recommend yellow is my absolute favorite color but it's such a hard color to control for a painting like this i would say yellow is probably the color i use the most when mixing colors and in my own personal art but for something like this an exercise of value and looking for shades and tints yellow is just difficult to work with okay now that i have at least seven values um seven is as far as i got with this one i'm going to find the absolute darkest place in the photograph and add that dark tint I know it or I'm sorry that dark shade I know it looks pure black but it's not it's my darkest one before I got to black and there's nothing wrong with using black I'm gonna go back and find like those darkest 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 areas that I really want to enhance the hair is a really great place to start because you can't really do it wrong I could make her hair a little bit wavier I could make it a little bit more full and most of it's pretty dark my sister Amber has really dark hair so that kind of works well for me anyway um you can see how i'm applying let me zoom in here so see how that dark over the base color blue plus that little blending i did makes it look so much more natural so really pay attention to areas of transition like hairlines clothing background that sort of thing and try to pay attention to the nuances of value that may be there i'm going to speed things up because i'm going to block in some of those darks and because it's very similar and i feel like i did all the hard work already like mapping out the face i know it's not perfect but i, I can see what i want to fix so i i feel good about it my confidence level is feeling pretty good right now again if you're looking at that thinking the nose isn't finished or it doesn't look like her i'm not done yet i just feel like i've mapped it out in a way that i know i can tighten it up um, and really play around with those darks and lights so mapping out the hair is really fun and easy um, and then looking at the face in the photograph there's really not that many like shades in the photograph itself certainly the pupils um, parts of the eyebrow I think there's like a little area in the mouth other than that it's pretty light it's pretty tint um, tint oriented which is good I enjoy mixing the tints and I think sometimes on the face using black can create it kind of like a muddy color scheme one mistake I see many young artists make and before I finish that sentence I am talking about myself as a young artist too back in the day is thinking of the background as separate from the subject as not working those colors and values before you finish the painting and just painting it last as an afterthought I debated on doing green in my background because my sister is sitting in front of a plant um, and I thought it would be a similar color scheme um, but give a little bit of contrast but I would like this just to be a simple monochromatic painting um, I just want it to focus on shades and tints of blue I don't want to like mix things up by adding another color here I'm gonna keep it very purely monochromatic and so I really enjoy the lighting here how it's darker on the right and kind of fades to light um, keep in mind if you were painting with multiple colors the environment that your subject is sitting in is really important so you would have like reflected light on the face you would have you know areas of light and dark you would want to blend in the background to make it look like it's behind the person there's so many different ways to do it luckily this photograph has a beautiful background as is i like the simplicity of the right hand side it gave me enough information to work with i can see my progression of you know more of a medium blue fading to a light blue it gives really nice contrast because her hair is so dark right next to it and then the plants on the left hand side are going to be a really interesting um, almost abstract design which I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the video looking at it if you didn't see the photograph you might not see leaves um, but, and I'm gonna paint it in a way that's more like textured so I'm just kind of blending with that dry brush here so that my gradient is nice and smooth which you could make your brush strokes different in the background depending on what your goals are so behind the plant or those lighter areas since I have that tint of blue on my brush already I'm gonna fill those in kind of thickly um, so that they're there. I already really like how it looks. I think the composition of this photograph is really nice. I did crop it. My sister sent it to me a little bit bigger and I zoomed in a little bit. Um, you wouldn't have to. It would depend on what you wanted to do. I did forget to paint the ears, so I'm putting that back in. And if you're wondering, I did double time the speed again since this is not detail work. It's just like filling in large areas of the same value. While I was thinking about it, I thought, let me go ahead and map out um, her shirt. One side looks pretty white and the other does have some blue in it. So I'm going to lay down kind of like a light blue tint. And then as that dries, I'll put some white on top of it to really let it stand out. I also need to finish the left shoulder here. And I enjoy that's a really fun area because you have that nice like shadow and highlight on her clavicle. 
that's a fun word, clavicle. Her arm there has a really nice gradient. You can see it has kind of the dark blue that fades into that really nice, beautiful light tint. So that was a really fun area to paint. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Make sure on your palette you are separating your shades and tints from each other. Because if my dark blue mixes with my light blue, black and white when they're mixed together, it's gonna gray out your color scheme and create a hue, which is fine. That's not like wrong. It just will not be that pure monochromatic shades and tints that you're probably looking for. Love the highlight on that hoop earring. So I'm going back in now and I'm adding white in the areas that I wanna add white and then kinda of like let it dry. So you can see I'm putting too much white in the eyes. I'm putting a pretty big highlight on the lip. Now that the face has dried, I'm layering a second, third, maybe fourth time. This time pure white on those highest raised areas of her face that uh, catch the light. Um, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll go back in and do my darks and then meet in the middle with anything that I'm missing. So I'm gonna mix up a shadow here and I'm gonna go back to my background while that dries. And that is one of the beauties of acrylic paint. It does dry so fast. You can layer, um, you can let things set before you move on to another area. Really besides the hair, most of the shades are happening in this background area. So those shades that I made before, not pure like dark black, but those like navy blues, I'm gonna map those in. Um, you can see the hair is darker in most areas than the leaves, but there are some areas that are in shade or shadow that are as dark as the hair, just a few. And then there's some areas of light in the hair that kind of matches. So it's a really fun background. Um, I love how it connects to the hair. I think it's a fun, organic, um, almost pattern-based area. So I was really pleased with that. If you're doing this, make sure your background doesn't have a lot of distracting things. If you take a picture in front of like a really busy fabric or in a crowded room or you know, somewhere like that, then it might be difficult and you might even wanna like avoid that background altogether and just practice painting the face. It might not be a complete work of art, but remember this is mostly practice. Um, for my students, it's not like if they you know, could submit this in their AP portfolio because it's like a direct copy, that sort of thing. But it's just a great way to build confidence and build skills. Um, if this is something you haven't done before. I remember my college professor in painting, we would trace images because we were learning like encaustic or oil paint or egg tempera, things that were very technique based that we needed to focus on that and not so much, oh, can I draw a face or can I draw this particular subject matter? So think of it as training wheels as a way to learn. Um, and then hopefully you'll take your training wheels off eventually and be able to ride that bike without the training wheels. Okay, look what's happening here. Do you see that gray area on the very far left? That's because I mixed, um, before my black paint dried, I mixed a very light tint. Again, there's nothing wrong. I'm glad it's in the background, but do you see how gray it is? So I wanted to kind of freeze on that for a minute and putting that blue right there, you can really see it. Not wrong, just a different way of painting. And if you're thinking your color scheme is getting muddy or hard to control, wash your brush and really pay attention to which paints are mixing and interacting on your palette. So this is the scary part, going back in and refining those details. I can see that that white has already paint or dried that I painted when I was working on my, or before I was working on my background. And so I'm giving just a little bit of eyelashes, trying to keep it natural, little bit more darkness in the brow. And you can see how those layers I've done really help out um, because you don't even have to fill it in all the way, just add like a few little marks. You know, play around with the hairline a little bit. I know I don't have like her cheek, um, and her forehead the exact right shape. So I'm gonna try and do her justice and get the shape of her face correct. I did trace it, so I don't really have an excuse. Contrast is an area I really focus on towards the end of a painting. I wanna make sure that my darks are as dark as they truly are and my lights are as light as they truly are too. Sometimes I push the limit a little bit. I love contrast. I love things being dark, dark, dark and light, light, light. So sometimes I push the envelope of what it actually looks like in real life and I do like a dramatic image with real dark areas and real light ones. So I am trying to stick to the photograph. I want the hair to really be that punch of dark and the pure white really is in the eyes and the shirt. And I don't wanna to change too much. I'm putting a few lines in the hair. I'm nervous that if I go back into the face, I, I'm a painter that goes in and, and changes things and reworks things all the time. So I'm trying to not be heavy handed and just leave well enough alone. Even if I know, like I think I can make it better. Sometimes I just end up making it worse. 
You can see I'm also using like the smallest brush with the finest point at this final detail stage, putting a few little hairs, um, just trying to get that final, you know, finished look. So because the shadows and the face and the skin are not really a shade, it's more like the base color of blue or the darkest tint, I'm gonna do another layer of that, which I'll then blend with my brush that doesn't have paint on it. Didn't add a shade, I might go in and add like the tiniest little, uh, maybe even watered down shade to just kind of darken it up without making it unnatural. Um, so you can see the blending of the brush makes a huge difference and I am pulling some of that up into the face over the lips You don't want it to be separate. You want the colors to kind of blend So I'm gonna make this corner really stand out give that like a little bit of a gradient Pay attention to that little shadow in the straps and I'm going back and forth with the brush with the paint on it And the brush that I'm blending brush with the paint on it brush that I'm blending and I do this in all my paintings I just have to be more careful if I'm not doing monochromatic because if I'm using like my light brush that has like my yellow yellows and my whites and then I get my dark brush that has like my you know burnt umber mixed in then that kind of muddies things up so as you progress as a painter as your palette gets more complicated with your blending brush I would definitely separate them from these are for my light areas these are for my darks my warms my cools things get way more complicated as you add more color I don't want to neglect the background so I'm going to make that corner a little bit darker for a dramatic effect um, because this blue really is kind of the base blue I should say really is kind of bringing everything together harmoniously um, and it's giving it that nice mid-tone that I think I might miss a little bit in my work of art I'm layering again getting into those eyes and I'm gonna put one more layer of white in the cheeks the nose just focusing on those lightest areas so it has you can see on that strap there that really makes it stand out and just kind of give it that beautiful highlight that lightest value and I really want this to look three-dimensional and not flat um, so that cheekbone over there those cheeks there you can see that really stand out and you can soften that or blend it but I think because I've built up to that value it looks fairly natural without blending it um, I went a little heavy-handed in that spot so I'll have to go back and fix it before it dries that's what I'm saying about going back and overworking it that big blob of white I just put there um, if I did that in multiple areas I'd be so stressed out so I'm taking that brush that's dry and I'm blending that down to that highlight before the paint ever dries luckily this acrylic paint is pretty thin um, which can be annoying but it's good for moments like this because you can do nice layers over areas that you maybe you made a mistake on the first time well I think she's done it might not look exactly like the photograph but it really does look like my sister Amber um, I have a good variety of darks and lights I don't feel embarrassed or ashamed of it so I think that's a win Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me. And if you're interested in more painting tutorials, check these out. Find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado to see what my students are up to in my classroom. And if you're interested in my full length lesson plans, free resources, find my website thatartteacher.com.